Okay, so we live in very interesting times. Most of the videos you see nowadays are professionally uh, videoed, edited, and, and, and spiced up. This is not that. This is just me sitting in my office getting ready to tell a story. <laughs> now, the last couple of days, right now it's February 14th, 2021. <clears throat> last couple of days I've been communicating with Rabbi Yisrael Hecht. He's the rabbi in Sunny, Sunnyvale, California. And I'm going to be sending it to him or to you. So I guess I'll speak right to you. So the last couple of days, we've been writing back and forth. And this is the, the a couple of days ago, was the 40th anniversary of your father. And uh, you circulated a great story. It's called the, uh, the Broken Nose Story. So, in honor of that, let me just tell the Broken Nose Story. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Broken Nose Story. When I first came to the beautiful city of Burlington, Vermont, <laughs> I was obviously a freshman in college. And this is what I look like. Okay? That's what it was. And all I had been doing for the last <clears throat> since I was like 11 was karate. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I did. Five hours a day. And I was training. So in my freshman year um, I was already a black belt. Okay, I won a lot of tournaments. This is one of my best moves. <clears throat> it's called a flying front kick. <laughs> I guess you might not know what that is, but it's a good move. <laughs> and this is what I was looking like uh, in the weight room. <laughs> and I had been winning a lot of tournaments, and my whole goal was just to the, go, go to the Olympics. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, keep training. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a little cough. It's not the corona, it's just a little cold. Anyhow, I came to college, and the same year, um, they brought your father to this synagogue. This is the Orthodox Synagogue in Burlington, Vermont, okay? So I just got to college, and they had just brought your dad. This is one of the one photo I have of your dad, Rabbi Shmuley. <laughs> And they just brought him into to the to Burlington to be the rabbi. So, what happened was like this. I'm training five hours every single day. Okay, and I'm fighting on week I'm fighting on weekends, and everything's great. Now, somehow they met your dad, they introduced your dad and, and me. So I'm in the dorm doing my things. And somehow, your dad, I keep looking at the clock, okay. And somehow, your dad got my phone number. So he would call up my dorm, like literally, every Friday afternoon. And he started using my, my Yiddish name. He'd say, Fischl, I hope you're coming for dinner tonight, because the Rebbitson made a fliggle for you. <laughs> like a chicken wing? Okay, I get ya. Now, I'm training all week. I'm training on Fridays. And I just I had just met your father, and he's already calling me up, literally, on Fridays. Now, your mother, God bless her, was a great cook. But, you know, um, you know, to get a college student to go to, you know, to, to sit with a rabbi and and the Rabbitson on a Friday night, that wasn't part of my plans. <laughs> but there was something about your dad's um sincerity and and, and warmth and and people like that, they're in a different, they're just so selfless. So he called me up and I would come over. And literally for four years during college, he got me to come over to their house. I think it was North Street or North Avenue, North Street. We'd get downtown near the shoe. And I'd walk down there. And then the next morning, Saturday morning, I would get up, train, 
And then we usually had like a, a fight, go to Massachusetts, Connecticut. That's what, what I did for, for high school and college. So you train all week and the uh, weekends you go fight. Now, your dad never, the idea was just to get me to sit at the table. He never said like, um, he never tried to influence me. It was just like, just let me absorb it. And we did that like for four years, okay? I mean, that was really heavy. So I'm like totally focused on the um, on the karate. And um, I mean, this is like you've got a master and you've got your training. This is like really heavy oriental traditional karate. This is not the new age kind of like feel good, do yoga one day, karate the next day and then be a vegetarian the third day. This is like, this is like your life karate. So... At that point, I've been doing this Friday night meals. And I, honestly, in those days, I never opened a book. I was in the gym all the time. And your dad wasn't even pushing me to do anything. He was just like, I just want you to sit at my Friday night dinner table. And that was really what it was. One time, he got me, he asked me to, to start studying a book. It was the book of Shmuel. I have it, in my, I have it over here on my, on my shelf. The book of Shmuel. I think I think he wanted to imbue in me some sort of history, sense of history, or something of that nature. I think I never read it. I still haven't read it. But he wanted me to read the book of Shmuel for some reason. I don't know why. I never did. So I mean, I was like so totally out of. I just I was like a regular, regular college guy and a regular athlete. I mean, I studied. I was not. I was not in the library. So, what's happening is, um, fourth year, okay, my fourth year in college, senior year, and I have a tournament, okay? New Haven, Connecticut. And we go down there, and this is, this is, this is like what the trophies look like. These are like small trophies, okay? This is, uh, this is me, okay? And this is, I'm a master, okay? Um, so I've got two people in my life. I've got the karate, which is my life, and my karate master, who to the, till today I'm totally fond of, and we're in great, great relationship. Now, go to New Haven, Connecticut. And what's happening is, um, in the morning, a guy turns around with this move, Okay? And breaks my nose. Fantastic. It's just, that's just the way it is, okay? Guy goes, it's called a spitting back kick, breaks my nose, everything's great. <clears throat> now, they fix it, they push it to the side, they put some cotton in it, <clears throat> and okay, they say, tonight you've got another fight coming up. Okay, great. Now, 10.30 at night, all the fights are done, I'm a heavyweight black belt, a fight facing another heavyweight black belt. And um, I've been bleeding all day and you know I've lost a lot of energy, but the main fight of the night, everything is good. You got a whole stadium of people there and um, fight's coming up, <clears throat> going to the ring, <clears throat> excuse me, three minutes, I get a point, he gets a point and I'm dying. I'm really dying over here. Great, another three minutes, another minute, overtime, another minute. And I got, I'm like really dying. And like, and my, my beautiful teachers are yelling at me, Flip, go get him. Don't worry about your nose. And I'm in the ring with this gorilla. Then you're allowed a second overtime, a second minute of overtime. Great. We get in the, we're in the ring. We're circling. And I'm like, really, at this point, it's been a whole day of like sitting outside eating rice and kimchi, the Korean stuff. <clears throat> And all of a sudden, um, halfway through the second minute, my body collapsed. I mean, my, my whole psyche collapsed. And I said, that because I've been doing this for 12 years. This has like been my life. Not the fight, training, fighting. And all of a sudden, in my mind's eye, okay, there's something called exploding and I imploded. And all of a sudden, I thought to myself, what is all the karate about? Is it about 
trophies? And is it about ego? And is it about power? And is it about, is, it, is that what it's all about? Is that what my training's been all about? And I said, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the karate just wants me, wants stuff from me. Maybe it wants, uh, wants trophies and glory from me. I don't know. And, and this is like, and if splits that, when you're facing a gorilla, <laughs> you, you have a lot of thoughts you don't have when you're eating ice cream. And then all of a sudden, your dad's face at the, at the Friday night dinner table flashed through my mind's eye. And I said to myself at that moment, well, what does he want from me? And, the, I, and I answered from my, my own guts. I said, he doesn't want anything from me. He wants something for me. It was like, whoa, like maybe this wants from me and this wants only for me. And at that moment, <clears throat> I decided to go to yeshiva. I said to myself, you know what? It's enough. You don't know anything about your religion. You better get, you, you just like change a little bit. Now, I, I always want to say this <clears throat> out of fairness. That was a hot-headed young man's decision that perhaps they only wanted from me. Years later, when I cooled down <laughs> and I spoke things over with my wife, I realized that they were just pushing me to another level of, uh, another level of digging deep. This was not that they wanted from Let's put that in perspective because these people are still alive and I still love them. So let's go back to the other point. But the point that I got at that point, which was correct, 100% correct, was that Rabbi Hecht only wanted something for me. <clears throat> it's called selfless. But people like Rabbi Hecht were beyond selfless. These were people who, who were connected, I, I don't know, connected to God, to the Torah, in a way where you never felt, <clears throat> in, you never felt like they were pushing something on you. They were just there. I don't even know how to describe it. Just like guiding you, nurturing you. They were like kind of like signposts, I guess. But if I could put it in one word, I would suppose that the thing which because it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't knowledge and it wasn't information. I would think that the one thing <coughs> that your dad, Oliver Shalom, the one thing which grabbed me, I would imagine it would be the selflessness of it. Anyhow, <laughs> I did it again. Every time I ever open my mouth, <clears throat> my wife says, you talk too much. Just say short things. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Anyway, love you guys, and I uh, hope you, you like the story. And I know it's a very emotional time, 43 years on the yard site. I hope your father, I'm sure your father's having a, Huge Ali and Shemaim. Hope your mother's well. Hope you're doing, I'm sure you're doing great in your community. God bless you all. Take care.